Hello, uh, today we are reading uh, this article which was shared by Prashant uh, in uh, Institute of Public Health Bangalore group. So I'm just going to zoom in to make it, uh, yeah. So it's titled Reimagining Research Activism and Rights at the Intersections of Sexuality, Health and Social Justice. And it's by Debolina Datta, Ajindar Global Law School, Sonipat India, and Institute of Global Law and Policy, Harvard Law School, mm, Laura Murray, and Elsa Oliveria, and Richard Parker. So, um, firstly, I am just assuming that this is open access, but uh, the, I mean, they have not given the actual license for this article, uh, and therefore I am not able to confirm whether it is a Creative Commons license article or not. Nevertheless, uh, considering this is a fair use, uh, I am gonna read through it. Um, <coughs> okay, it's jumping. The COVID-19 pandemic inaugurated a new global order of public life and health marked my death, despair and alienation. As a crisis of global scale, it made the task of reimagination simultaneously necessary and extremely difficult. Mm. Okay, uh, to, <coughs> to be very honest, uh, the reason I started making a video with this is because uh, I tried reading this on my phone a couple of times and uh, it was <laughs> it was so difficult to read uh, uh, it is not light to read so um, and uh, I think now it kind of makes sense that uh, it's not a difficult read uh, okay I will comment about that later but basically uh, they're talking about this is the abstract so abstract is gonna be a bit meaningless I think in this article mm. so it's an introductory article uh, in that uh, journal uh, in the journal of um, global public health so as a crisis of global scale it made a task of necessary and difficult Is the, the, it is the double bind of the difficulty and imminence of imagination and motivates the curation of this special issue. In this introduction, we map the connections between the themes of this volume and the key ideas that constitute its varied contributions, which are organized under three broad mobilizing ideas. So, uh, rights and resilience, sexuality, health and justice, and politics of knowledge production and collaboration rights and resilience, sexuality, health and justice and contributions cover myriad issues, engaging methodological innovations and play with diverse genres, genres. All alongside more traditional academic writings are community based research papers, activist conversations, virtual essays, reflective pieces and interviews. The geographical span of the contributions brings insights from around the world and the number of topics covered in this issue are equally vast including among others mental health, disability, environment, sex work, violence, cureness, LGBTQ plus experiences, love and anger. The aim of this special issue then is to challenge the mani whatever this is. Mani chin. Manikyan. Manikyan. Okay, it's not in the dictionary either. Let's try our search. A believer in a synchronistic religious dualism. Manikin distinctions are often drawn between research and activism and by extension between theory and practice. Okay, so this is the most important, I guess, uh, um, sentence of the whole abstract. This issue is to challenge the binary view 
that activism is separate from research and that uh, uh, theory is separate from practice uh, and this was the context in which it was shared also so um, I will I will uh, now reread uh, the article with that uh, uh, with that in the mind uh, so the introduction is probably gonna be a bit uh, boring let's see what the sections are there is introduction then like they said three different uh, rights or resilience uh, sexual health and justice politics of knowledge production and collaborations and then there's conclusion so let's quickly go through the introduction the covid 19 pandemic inaugurated a new global order of public life and health marked by death despair alienation as a crisis uh, the speed of viral spread the immediacy of human vulnerability fear of death deep inadequacies put breaks on any engagement with the idea of future. This aggravated the existing asymmetries in access to scientific knowledge and resources, the re of surveillance and border control, use public health concerns as a conceit for normalizing state corporation military control over planetary life. Everything was imminent, immediate and intimate, wherever we are located, uh, risk and uncertainty. Yet, while the overall sense of doom and despair and the mandates of lockdowns made us live atomized lives within the provinces of our homes, for those of us who had homes, state brutality against precarious citizens and non-citizens continued unabated. Unbated. Is it unabated or unabated? I think uh, this journal doesn't do. Okay, unabated is correct. Unabated means without reduction in intensity or strength. Unabated means not abated. Okay, maybe it's another spelling. Now, uh, one second. Let, <coughs> let me see if this dictionary works for any word. Okay, it doesn't work for any word. Is it? Huh, it works for some words. Okay, so this dictionary is not very good. Uh, in India, we saw millions of daily wage laborers walk thousands of miles to return to their villages from large cities. Many died uh, completely uncared for by the state. Those who managed to reach destination were treated as vectors and were sanitized with toxic sprays. Similar neglect and brutality were seen in South Africa. Uh, civilians uh, instance of police violence against civilians rose dramatically during initial lockdown particularly against most marginalized uh, law enforcement officials including army private security and police were given license to secure borders and maintain order in ways that would be extreme even for an authority and state a catastrophic combination of denialism, corruption, finger pointing, and political maneuvering was seen in Brazil during the pandemic. Okay, um, just uh, some thought that comes when I was reading all this. Okay, uh, <coughs> I think one of the issues with uh, research is that research is done after uh, all the news cycle has settled and everything. Like, see, there will be papers published about um, India's first lockdown in 2021. India's first lockdown happened in 2020, right? The paper comes in 2021. Now, how how is that going to affect anyone? Nobody reads those papers going, um, you know, about the past. And even if they read, they don't uh, use it to change their behavior in the future. So I think the difference between research and activism comes from this time uh, criticality of uh, when activism needs is needed and when research can happen because of the practical limitations of research. Uh, but that's just my thought. I'll just keep it to myself for now. Uh, um, law enforcement officials, um, including army, private security and police were given license to secure borders, maintain order in ways that would be extreme even for 13 state. Um, denialism, corruption, finger pointing, political maneuvering in Brazil. 
This led to pandemic response founded in conspiracy theories and allied friendly economic policies, which led to soaring deaths, hospital collapses, calamity that primarily affected countries poor, black and indigenous populations, and in the US thousands bred infection to take to streets to protest injustice of killing George Floyd. Uh, in all these contexts, which led groups to demonstrate what kind of social justice work can be done by communities in the face of complete state apathy. These scenes of human resilience were powerful indications that holding on to the future was a necessary ethical imperative. It is this double bind of the impossibility and eminence of imagination that motivates. Okay, uh, suddenly they've jumped to um, impossibility and imagination. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what is a new imagination that's required uh, in uh, because of COVID. I mean, uh, uh, what has become um, different during COVID. It, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of things have become exposed and public and uh, obvious, but uh, uh, it's not like a new imagination is required just because of COVID or just during COVID. Mm, but nonetheless, let's uh, just uh, assume that uh, for, for the sake of uh, discussion, it needs to be stated in that way. No, as scholar activists working in the area of sexuality, rights and health from very disparate, we were able to see the shared challenges in the event of pandemic, post to our lives and work of image, existing theoretical and activist tools that we are trained to use to understand and sometimes transform our world seemed woefully inadequate. What would participate research mean when we were unable to participate? What might care mean when we are not able to hold each other? What might solidarity mean when our bodies have become the fault lines that fracture moments? Um, what do we live and death when it is the order of the day? How do we collaborate when the knowledge apartheid of Zoom University aligns with the vaccine apartheid of Big Pharma? How do we think of the labor of the academic work and the effect of care and work when the realms of public and private have collapsed onto each other? Where the home has become the office and the office home? the anthropocentric assumptions that underlie understanding of human rights and sexual reinforce a species hierarchy in the era of climate change. Of course, these questions suppose are new, but are recording with the pandemic has opened up generative possibility. How do we think with these challenges without sentimentalizing the pandemic as exceptional, while at the same time not reducing it to a business as usual? Okay, so I think uh, they are trying to, um, they have responded to my point about uh, COVID not being a special thing um, uh, here uh, they're saying this is not a place to sentimentalize the pandemic as exceptional but yeah I mean I also agree with them that uh, it's not like it was business as usual during COVID um, uh, this paragraph uh, sounded a bit uh, like the life of a researcher uh, to me uh, like it, it felt like research has become difficult um, but yeah, nevertheless, uh, guest of reimagining felt like difficult yet necessary orientation in the phase. Difficult because we are still living through pandemic. Uh, necessary because it's bare minimum of obligation. Uh, the parenthetical prefix is crucial. Suggests that multiple revisioning, reconsider. Revaluing, reverting, rethinking, redoing, remaking, restructuring. The promise of such action lies both in innovation and in working anew with old tools as a way of rectification. The tasks of innovation and rectification run the risk of refining the very categories and structures that, as research and activists, we often want to work against or with. Innovation and rectification can also help us repair and perhaps perform the reform the irreparable okay now i'm feeling very tired with this article because it's like i said introduction would be boring but uh, uh they they keep on telling reform reform re 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 re, re without uh, much of a point um in this special issue and right then they switch to their main content the two key prac uh, through three ideas of research activism and rights Three ideas of research, activism, and rights. Okay, when it suddenly became three, three ideas. 
because in the uh, abstract it ended with saying it's about uh, the distinction between research and activism um, anyhow uh, the two key practices are the four editors is issue engaging combining research and activism and uh, they're all from universities and their work is deeply inspired by association with activist movements this does not mean that we understand the university as site of research and movements as site of activism rather we continue to learn from our work that the university is and ought to be an activist site as much as movements are and ought to be a site of theoretical knowledge production so i think uh, this is the core uh, contention of this uh, article and uh, uh, we have to figure out if they are justified in stating this sentence based on the um, issue prob probably um, for me i mean just to reveal my biases here i do think that i mean i do agree with that this is an ambitious statement that we need to aspire towards uh, but uh, i'm not very sure if university universities in um, at least the universities around um, some of uh, us are um, as activist as they should be uh, and whether calling that is university is activist site uh, do they mean that university the definition of a university is an activist site or do they mean that the actual practice of a university is activist site i'm not very sure i think they mean the former because uh, in practice uh, universities don't tend to be as much activistic as uh, they uh, ought to be um, and uh, and vice versa movements uh, again movements uh, have a lot of knowledge uh, in it but uh, they don't tend to produce a lot of theoretical knowledge so um, that binary me 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 much manic manichaean thing exists in my uh, opinion and uh, they're trying to challenge that my manichaean manichaean distinction uh, the articles in this issue do not consider them as identical but at the same time acknowledge that each co constitutes the other so the <laughs> they're acknowledging <laughs> the very beginning itself that there is a distinction and um, that uh, <laughs> um, there is an overlap um, okay so um, i think the art <laughs> the article could have ended here because uh, they they basically uh, drawn a middle ground here they they just said uh, it's not like they are distinct but it's not like they don't have overlap so mm, anyhow we identified three broad mobilizing themes under which contributions have been organized uh, not only do this article touch upon multiple themes they also engage in methodological innovations and play with diverse genres alongside more conventional academic writings there is also other visual essays reflective pieces interviews commentaries and stuff like that um, from india also uh, equally vast so when we set out to put together we neither anticipated you know this mix of form substance and regional representation not such an overwhelming response to a call mm. this is interesting because um, they 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 have possibly captured the lives of many uh, li the, the lived experience of many uh, many people uh, in uh, europe and uh, panama i suppose in panama mm. okay so rights rights is the first thing rights and resilience the meeting point between research and activism for all of us as editors and our contributors is rights okay so um 
that's where the third uh, theme i mean the third point of rights come from our view of rights is multifaceted and this has this was also very much reflected in the contributions as a standard understanding goes rights arise from an individual or collective claim against a state or pro state authority proto state authority which is accountable for protecting it uh okay uh, i do have a thought that comes up about this because see um activism is about rights that i can agree with because what what can an activist say the activist can only stand up and say you are either violating my right or you can say you you um you need to give me this right something like that activists can demand for rights but research um, i always see research as having some commitment to knowledge and uh, the issue with knowledge is that uh, knowledge morality and knowledge are like is right a knowledge can you like do research and find that okay this is a right you can only do um what kind of research would you do to say that uh, <laughs> i have a right to um, life or right to bodily integrity you can do research which suggests that if i do not have right to bodily integrity then uh, my uh, quality of life goes down or that my uh, economic uh, some utilitarian uh, aspect of uh, uh, my life can be measured and then you can say that right is important so that's what research can do research can only uh, measure um, someone's need for rights or the violation of their rights and then uh, point out that it has led to some of these um, uh, some of these uh, what is it called um, bad outcomes so uh, that correlation utilitarian uh, values you ut- uh, the or i mean any framework of uh, this thing uh, writing about uh, uh, whether a right has been violated uh, that's all research can do whereas activism is directly talking about the right uh, and uh, i think uh, i mean of course it is possible to choose your research topics such that it, it uh, helps in activism but um, mm, yeah anyhow let's uh, go down and see um the strength of a claim however is predicated upon how claimant are valid and the rights are realized lies wonders okay i don't know how to pronounce this name and lorraine nansel tell us how male sex workers in kenya paved the way for the realization of their rights through community led advocacy efforts and when sensitization of law enforcement officials um um okay um okay i i don't <laughs> so i've been reading these sentences i'm i'm struggling to um connect these two uh okay uh, so one thing is uh, these are all different people have written different papers based on a call that was made so they are just trying to group them together it's not like they will all be connected to the point that was laid out in introduction and therefore uh, there is no need to try to fit all of these into the framework that they already laid out uh, so we might have to look at the articles individually uh, 
uh, and then the individual articles might get uh, might give a different sense also mm. how would a claim for protection or redress succeed if the right in question is not validated by the law so this is a nice question um, if um, the law is not on the activist side how would an individual or collective um, you know fight for it uh, shows the flawed nature of state authorized legal rights and its inadequate conception of the sexuality of young people uh, so th this is all about rights um, says there's no right to abortion means state did not consider that claim to be valid because it did not recognize through law that sex work is a legitimate form of work Mm, due to such state of rest discriminations, both abortion and sex work remain an especially fertile uh, ground for rights question and contestation of citizenship. I'm again getting confused because uh, uh, they are they using one one sentence to write about a paper and uh, uh, without without um, reading the whole paper I wouldn't uh, be able to draw uh, a conclusion as to what they try to bring out from it I think uh, the whole idea of <laughs> writing a paragraph which talks about different different articles and then uh, as if they are all coming together in some way is a bit flawed uh, because yeah i mean i get it they are they're all talking about rights maybe mm. uh, but uh, it doesn't feel very natural to me it would have it would have been better uh, stated as a list of uh, articles you give a title called rights and list down the articles uh, one by one by one so um, I mean yeah they're all talking about rights then put a title and put them as rights it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense to give a uh, give a whole context and uh, point make as if it's making a big point uh, to state it and then not making a point as such i mean i don't know see why why do i say it's not making a point as such some of these things uh, i mean most of these things i would just count as activism um see in our instance concept claims for sex workers movements in india and south africa where those involved sex industry have been demanding right to sex work but until recently the state did not consider that claim to be valid because it did not recognize through law that sex work is a legitimate form of work where is the research here I mean, it's all activism, right? Is is it the fact that someone wrote about it that makes it research? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, uh, so, I mean, let's see if they resolve this issue later on. show if activist success in the fields of right coexist with the ways in which international human rights laws continue to be used um, again they are talking about activism mm. persecution debate I don't understand anything okay rights then are not a universal good okay let's see what's happening here if such criteria are not met powerful western countries can impose economic sanctions Okay, so this paragraph is about how the West, um, um, uh, US mainly, uh, will will fight uh, wars on the name of rights. So, 
that's what they mean by rights are not a universal good um, there's a reimagination of relationship between research and activism that produces a system about the double bind of rights okay okay now they're trying to make a point uh, they simultaneously regulate and emancipate their promises and betrayals are contingent upon historical context and marginalized rights claimants and activists who work with subaltern groups are most cognizant of this paradox as also evidence in the contributions in this issue it is a reimagination of the relationship between research and activism that produces this wisdom about the double bind of rights yeah what they're saying is if it was not for research uh, this wisdom wouldn't have been there activists are challenges and no no they are not even saying that they are saying that uh, uh, activists have forced researchers to produce this wisdom so i mean <coughs> not only are they not they not only are they admitting that the wisdom came from activism um, they are also saying that uh, it is a reimagination of the relationship so they are still thinking that uh, it's only when researchers took it did it become wisdom um i think i mean i'm just being a uh, adversarial here uh, it's not probably what the authors meant or anything but uh, writing about sex work in south africa hmm even activist practice is getting depolitized through ngoization and philanthropic capitalism okay i didn't understand any of this previous section but nevertheless let's go to the next section we look at our project of reimagination at the intersection of sexuality health and social justice even with an active economic work on rights there is a hierarchization between civil and political rights and economic social and cultural rights in this hierarchy civil and political rights are considered of great importance uh, and economic social and cultural rights need to be realized progressively based on capacity even within the field of reproductive rights such hierarchies and dichotomies exist Um. Okay, maybe I'm trying maybe I'm getting what they're saying. So, I think um activism is uh, seen as a mindless thoughtless activity in this uh, whole um uh, um uh, approach or framework. And research is seen as a very intellectual um kind of um, bringing insights and wisdoms into uh words and into people's minds um, and that is the dichotomy they draw on to uh, kind of um uh, to kind of um, justify the lack of such i mean to kind of justify the writing against such a dichotomy so i think i mean in in my mind at least the dichotomy didn't exist uh, the dichotomy was only between activists uh, who are on the field i mean activists the dichotomy is only between activist scholars and useless university scholars and uh, there is no dichotomy between 
um, scholarship and activism activism is scholarship and scholarship uh, true scholarship is uh, impossible without activism uh, but there is a dichotomy between university scholarship and uh, and uh, activist scholarship so that dichotomy uh, is probably what uh, needs to be uh, dismantled I mean that's the dichotomy I was speaking against also uh, mm. So the first reason for focus on sexuality, health and social justice is about working against a hierarchization of civil and political rights and economic, social and cultural rights. So I suppose they are calling a right to speech as a uh, political right and uh, right to sexual orientation as a uh, economic, social and cultural right. I don't know. Uh, I thought right to sexual condition is part of right to life which would make it a civil right. Mm. Second reason for this focus particularly on sexuality is about the way in which research, activism, human rights have surely considered sexuality to be unimportant or frivolous in comparison to issues like race and class. To some sexuality may seem to be an unimportant topic. So you should be treated with special respect in times of great social stress. Yeah, I mean, um, if people don't think that uh, um, patriarchy or um, hetero normativity or um, uh, gendered um, gendered expectations from people and sexual um, uh, is sexuality really what what do they mean by sexuality here mm. Okay, uh, I, I'm just going to drop my point. I was going to say that if people don't think that these have nothing to do with uh, poverty, war, disease, racism, famine or nuclear annihilation, then they're wrong because all of these uh, are all part of one continuous uh, um, uh, con one spectrum of thoughts which uh, is against others or against change or against uh, questioning the status quo. So, uh, I mean, uh, in that way, they're all connected. You know, from history, challenges that rising sexuality question at post labor rights movement to feminist movement to collect demands for land rights, rights to health and health care, to asylum. Uh, but this issue. So, I mean, this is a very, very, very interesting um, section, I, I think, uh, if they're, if, if what they're, if they're delivering on their promise, they're essentially saying that sexuality is a key, um, key ingredient of uh, many of these uh, uh, movements. Um, This is particularly the case with the shared ideal, shared commitment to carcerality. Hope the dictionary tells me what it is. Carcerality, incarceration, jail. Okay, so jail and criminalization. Mm.
Wow, this is super. Um, I would love to read this article. Adriana Pisilin's ethnographic work observes the growth and potency of Puta Feminista movement in Brazil using analytical categories of love and anger to explore the relationship with feminist movement. Having, um, having been looking at love and anger, I love to read this article. <laughs> Mm. While feminist women purpose to other to decolonize feminist principles of love and plurality, some groups have responded to sex work activists with intense anger and virtual aggression. Um, these sections are really interesting. of social justice that takes both the structural and the effective seriously okay this is uh, not a very good article for the video because there's a lot going on the every word is a <laughs> is, uh, is is packed with meaning so mm, but nevertheless uh, now that I've started I'll finish the video uh, but uh, essentially they're uh, now talking about a different dichotomy of public and private uh, This last section is about uh, authorship. Not, <laughs> I mean, sorry, not authorship. That <laughs> that is about. <laughs> um, I hope you've seen the latest IJME uh, issue, which is all about uh, authorship and uh, um, where is that? Uh, uh, this is not the IJME I was looking for. In the Journal of Medical Ethics. Uh, on authorship ethics <laughs> so I think uh, IGME is a bit outdated uh, for that reason um, uh, authorship controls in academic publication um, I mean they're still talking about authorship whereas uh, this has gone a bit uh, further and uh, they're indeed talking about uh, knowledge production and uh, collaborations and the nature of the political demands. I mean, I didn't read the whole uh, IGM issue. Um, uh, maybe they are also talking somewhere about it, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have, I have a rough idea of how deep uh, IGM would have gone into it. Mm, okay, so um, we are back here. So the quest to question forms of knowledge production does not mean to abandon authority, but technology its limitations. This is a really useful uh, sentence. Uh, because just this last week, uh, 
I was in this debate where people were justifying um, um, homeopathy, Reiki, all kinds of um, bullshit um, by um, saying that uh, there is no single authority that that you that uh, you as in uh, a person who is uh, uh, talking with science as their uh, authority cannot uh, just if uh, cannot just uh, ignore other other uh, in quotes or uh, alternate uh, realities or that alternate truths can exist and that uh, um, there is nobody who can say this is the truth and that is a, not the truth that all of these are truths i mean these kinds of um, bullshit is uh, fed into the consciousness of uh, uh, susceptible uh, individuals uh, who have the humility to accept uh, um the the that there are other uh, uh, there that there are multiple ways of looking at uh, things but uh, who do not have the confidence to clearly call out bullshit when they see bullshit so uh, those people get uh, trapped in this uh, situation where uh, you can uh, you can see that something is not right but you are not able to you are you are forced to justify that as a possible alternative interpretation and that there is no authority possible in the in their framework so uh, this is a very nice uh, sentence um, it's just uh, acknowledgement that's required challenge was to cultivate an editorial practice that took the contribution on its own term so rather than imposing the terms of academic scholarship on it. This issue seems to be really interesting in if uh, I mean going by the um, introduction. Saunders argues for the inclusion of sex workers' knowledge about injustice that is produced through their activism into the conceptual frameworks used in academic research. Now, the question should be, like, if these are not included already in academic research conceptual frameworks, then what are these frameworks trying to do? I mean, shouldn't these frameworks be dismantled by now already? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's obvious if you look at it from an outside uh, perspective, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean... It's a sad reality of academic research. For your collaborative newsletter, probably between six hours and researches. Uh, and another point I wanted to make here uh, is see, conceptual frameworks. The problem with conceptual framework is that you want to try to categorize things and you want to draw neat little figures and square, uh, you know, boxes and put things into uh, different. Uh, in a in a symmetric uh, kind of framework and uh, the problem with human life is that it's messy it's intersectional it's interconnected that there, there are very nuanced and uh, contextual situations and uh, a framework doesn't really capture all the possibilities that occur in a human life uh, so the moment there's a framework um, you typically tend to um, uh, get uh, trapped i mean frameworks are useful in one way like when you have a framework you can figure out what what things you're not focusing on like uh, the framework helps you uncover or discover new things uh, but uh, the framework also forces you to unsee what you're already seeing so it, it is a 
a double edged sword in that sense <clears throat> so mm. very interesting so <laughs> this is it. When we critique the exclusionary nature of categories, we inevitably create, we inevitably, inevitably create newer categories of our own that produce their own exclusions. Depending on context, these very critical traditions may sometimes be in conversation and at other times in conflict. Collaborative critical knowledge reflection with the knowledge in many sites of struggle and reimagination, but undoubtedly this work of reimagination is generative struggle. When done as a collaborative activity, can be an opportunity for new learnings and shifting horizons. Very interesting. So, um, oh wow, <laughs> this is a very interesting note because we just wrote a similar note in a similar article. I mean, uh, not a similar article in a in another article. Uh, I have to share this with someone. Uh, copy that. Uh, Okay, so um, overall, I think uh, this article is uh, is, uh, is not uh, very very interesting, but the content it uh, has, uh, the the issue, uh, the journal issue has is promising. Uh, so we should probably read the whole issue. Um, I don't know how they would have uh, published all of these uh, other things. Um, uh, what uh, is this latest article how do I go to that issue uh, let me try going back uh, uh, this is 12th August 2022 uh, how do we go to that issue mm. let's go to list of issues there it is Recent issue, current issue, volume 17. This is uh, what is this? I think this is not the issue. Let's go over to the previous. Issue. How do we read an issue in this? This is a special issue. Politics and pandemics. Oh, okay. Let's do one thing. Let's look at the uh, issue this one was part of does it have a uh, how do we know which issue this is part of okay
it says uh, 12th August okay this is in the latest articles section so maybe this is the next issue uh, that makes sense uh, okay so uh, this issue the next issue is going to be uh, really interesting from global public health uh, uh, and see there's a reimagining research activism and all uh, the number of views seem to be rather low 193 I don't know um, maybe later on it will increase uh, okay thank you so much um, maybe uh, that makes sense maybe that doesn't make sense but uh, I think it's been too long now bye